Most people think confidence comes from looking perfect, earning validation, or winning every argument. But here's the truth. Confidence doesn't come from the outside. It's built from within. It's not about proving your worth to others. It's about knowing your worth, even when the world challenges you. In this video, we're diving deep into the mindset shifts that transform how you react to life's toughest moments. From mastering your emotions to standing firm in your values, I'll show you how to cultivate unshakable confidence and turn challenges like disrespect into tools for growth. Ready to change how you see yourself and the world? Let's get started. Number one, pause before reacting. Regain control over your emotions. There's something universally liberating about taking a moment to breathe before you act. Imagine a time when you were frustrated, maybe during a chaotic day, someone cut you off in traffic, or a co-worker spoke to you dismissively. It's in these moments that the world feels like it's testing you. Yet in the pause, there's power. Let's start with happiness. Think of a time when someone surprised you with unexpected kindness. Maybe it was as simple as someone letting you cut in line at a grocery store or a stranger paying for your coffee. These small gestures leave us feeling that humanity has a softness, a sense of grace. But now, flip that moment. What happens when you encounter the opposite? Disrespect can feel sharp, like a knife cutting through the day's peace. You want to respond immediately, to defend yourself, but what if that reaction costs you more than the initial insult? The core truth is this, the instant reaction feels satisfying in the moment, but it often leaves us regretting what we said or did later. Stoic philosophy teaches us that the gap between stimulus and response is where self-control resides. It's where we have the chance to define who we are, rather than letting emotions decide for us. The great philosopher Epictetus once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Taking a breath before reacting can mean the difference between chaos and calm, between escalation and resolution. Think back to a moment when you reacted on impulse. Perhaps it was an argument with a loved one where words spilled out faster than you could filter them. You didn't mean everything you said, but the damage was done. That sinking feeling of regret, remember it? Now, picture how that same moment could have unfolded if you'd paused, taken a breath, and chosen your words with care. Nostalgia reminds us that restraint could have rewritten the past. Curiously, how many times do we let the heat of the moment dictate our actions? What would happen if we trained ourselves to pause every time? You might wonder, how do I develop this practice in a world that constantly demands instant responses? What kind of power could you unlock if you mastered the ability to pause and regain control? Number 2. Shift your perspective. It's not about you. It's a sunny afternoon and you're walking through a park. The air is fresh, kids are laughing in the distance, and for a moment, life feels uncomplicated. Then someone bumps into you without apologizing. It's jarring, and instinctively, you feel slighted. But what if that moment wasn't about you? What if that person was rushing to catch a bus, preoccupied with their own struggles? Start with happiness. Remember the times when someone showed you understanding, even when you didn't deserve it. Maybe you were short-tempered at a store, but the cashier smiled and wished you a good day anyway. Moments like these make us feel seen, forgiven, and connected. Now consider this, when someone disrespects you, is it possible that they're carrying burdens you can't see? Shifting your perspective can transform your experience of disrespect from an attack on your self-worth to a glimpse into someone else's humanity. The core content here is the stoic principle of seeing beyond yourself. Marcus Aurelius once wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. What if their disrespect isn't a reflection of you, 
but of their internal chaos. By choosing not to take things personally, you protect your peace and become a mirror reflecting calmness instead of chaos. Nostalgia takes us to a time when we misunderstood someone's actions, only to later realize the context. Perhaps a friend snapped at you and you felt hurt, only to discover they were going through something difficult. That hindsight reminds us of how often we jump to conclusions. Think back to those moments when you realized it wasn't about you. Wouldn't it have been freeing to know that in the moment, rather than realizing it later? Curiously, how much energy do we spend worrying about others' opinions or actions when they're likely not even thinking about us? How different would life feel if we stopped interpreting every interaction as personal? Can you imagine the mental space you'd reclaim by choosing to believe that disrespect is rarely about you? Number three, hold firm to your values. Respond with integrity. Picture this, you're in a heated debate, maybe at work or with a friend. Tempers are rising, voices are getting louder, and suddenly someone crosses a line. They say something rude, disrespectful, or dismissive. In that moment, you have two choices. Match their energy or hold firm to your values. What do you do? Begin with happiness. Think of a time when you stayed true to yourself, even when it wasn't easy. Perhaps you stood up for a friend, kept your cool in an argument, or resisted the urge to gossip. Those moments of integrity feel good because they align with who we want to be. Now, imagine the opposite. How does it feel when we stoop to someone else's level? It's often a hollow victory, leaving us wondering if we compromised our character in the process. The core content is this. Your response to disrespect is a reflection of your character, not theirs. Holding firm to your values doesn't mean ignoring bad behavior. It means addressing it with composure. The Stoics believed that virtue is the highest good. Marcus Aurelius advised, be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. In practice, this means choosing integrity over impulsiveness, kindness over retaliation. Let's get nostalgic. Recall a time when you responded to someone's disrespect with grace. Maybe it was a rude comment from a stranger, and instead of snapping back, you offered a polite response. That memory likely brings a sense of pride. Now think about the times when you let your emotions take over. Those moments, though human, often leave a lingering feeling of dissatisfaction. Integrity, on the other hand, creates a lasting sense of self-respect. Curiously, how often do we let others dictate our behavior? If someone else acts poorly, does that justify abandoning our values? What kind of example do we set when we hold firm in the face of disrespect? And more importantly, how does it shape the way we view ourselves? Imagine a world where every interaction, even the difficult ones, is an opportunity to reinforce your integrity. What kind of legacy would that create for you? Number four, let go of validation. Your worth comes from within. Picture this, you're scrolling through social media and you see a friend post an achievement, a new job, a luxurious vacation, or perhaps just a well-lit photo with hundreds of likes. As you glance at the modest engagement on your own recent posts, a pang of inadequacy creeps in. Why is their success celebrated more than yours? This moment, seemingly small, represents a common struggle. The tendency to measure our worth by external validation. But what if you could break free from this cycle? Letting go of the need for validation isn't about ignoring feedback or being indifferent to others' opinions. It's about recognizing that your intrinsic value doesn't fluctuate based on external approval. In a world where constant feedback is the norm, be it from colleagues, friends, or strangers on the internet, this concept may seem revolutionary, yet it's also the key to emotional freedom. When we root our self-worth in others' validation, we relinquish control over our happiness. A compliment may momentarily lift us, 
but criticism or indifference can just as quickly bring us down. This dependence makes our confidence fragile and our peace unstable. The wisdom of Stoicism offers a different approach. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and philosopher, wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. By focusing on internal metrics of success, we regain sovereignty over our sense of self. Think back to a time when you achieved something significant, yet it went unnoticed. Maybe you completed a personal goal, like running a marathon, writing a poem, or mastering a skill. Even without applause, the satisfaction of knowing you persevered was undeniable. This inner validation is far more enduring than fleeting praise. It's a reminder that the deepest fulfillment comes from aligning your actions with your values, not from seeking acknowledgement. The modern world, however, constantly nudges us toward external validation. Social media platforms, performance reviews, and even casual conversations often condition us to seek approval. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking, if they don't recognize my efforts, do they matter? This mindset can lead to overworking, people-pleasing, and even self-doubt. To break free, we must shift our focus inward. Ask yourself, am I proud of what I've done? Does it align with my principles? If the answer is yes, then external opinions become secondary. At its core, letting go of validation is about self-ownership. It's about living authentically, guided by your values and passions, rather than the fear of judgment. When you liberate yourself from the need for external approval, you also free yourself to take risks, embrace vulnerability, and pursue your goals wholeheartedly. Imagine the opportunities you might seize if you weren't worried about what others might think. Would you start a business, share your art, or advocate for a cause close to your heart? The possibilities are boundless. Letting go of validation doesn't mean rejecting all feedback. Constructive criticism can be invaluable for growth. However, it's essential to discern between feedback that helps you improve and opinions that merely reflect others' biases or insecurities. The next time you face criticism, pause and ask yourself, is this feedback aligned with my goals? If not, let it go. Your worth isn't determined by others' perceptions, it's rooted in your character and actions. In many ways, learning to let go of validation is a return to self-trust. As children, we often acted based on instinct and joy, not external approval. Reconnecting with that sense of authenticity can be deeply empowering. It allows us to act boldly, speak truthfully and live fully, even in the absence of applause. This journey isn't easy, but it's profoundly rewarding. It transforms the way we see ourselves and interact with the world, making us more resilient, confident and free. Number five, turn disrespect into growth. A test of your character. Disrespect stings. Whether it's a rude comment, an unfair judgment or an outright insult, such moments can leave us feeling angry, hurt or devalued. But what if these experiences weren't just annoyances to endure, but opportunities to grow? Turning disrespect into growth is a skill, one that requires emotional resilience, perspective, and a deep commitment to self-improvement. Let's start with a relatable scenario. Imagine a colleague publicly criticizes your work during a meeting. The initial reaction might be defensive, racing thoughts, a flushed face, and the urge to retaliate. But before responding, consider this. What does their behavior say about them? Often, disrespect reflects more about the other person's state of mind than your worth. This perspective can help you step back and assess the situation with clarity rather than reacting emotionally. Disrespect tests our character in profound ways. It challenges us to remain composed under pressure, to respond with dignity rather than aggression, 
and to uphold our values even when others fail to do so. This isn't about suppressing emotions or tolerating mistreatment. It's about choosing a response that aligns with who you are, not letting someone else's negativity dictate your behavior. The wisdom of Stoicism provides invaluable guidance here. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, taught that while we can't control others' actions, we can control our responses. He wrote, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. When faced with disrespect, this perspective empowers us to shift our focus from what we can't change, others' behavior, to what we can, our own mindset and actions. Think back to a time when someone disrespected you, yet you managed to rise above it. Perhaps it was a dismissive comment that you chose to ignore, or a heated argument where you maintained your composure. These moments, though difficult, likely left you feeling stronger and more self-assured. They're reminders that how we handle adversity often defines us more than the adversity itself. Turning disrespect into growth also requires self-reflection. After a disrespectful encounter, take a moment to evaluate your feelings and reactions. Did the incident trigger insecurities or past wounds? If so, it's an opportunity to address those areas and build greater self-confidence. For instance, if a colleague's criticism feels particularly hurtful, ask yourself why. Is it because you doubt your abilities or fear failure? Recognizing these underlying emotions can help you grow not just from the situation, but beyond it. Moreover, responding to disrespect with grace often has a ripple effect. When you choose dignity over retaliation, you set an example for others. This doesn't mean being passive or accepting mistreatment. It means addressing issues assertively, but respectfully. For instance, instead of snapping back at a rude comment, you might calmly say, I value constructive feedback, but I'd appreciate it if we could discuss this privately. Such responses not only diffuse tension, but also demonstrate emotional maturity. Turning disrespect into growth also involves gratitude. Odd as that might sound, every challenging interaction is a chance to practice patience, empathy and resilience. While we don't need to thank those who disrespect us, we can appreciate the lessons they inadvertently teach. Over time, this mindset can transform how we view adversity, making us more adaptable and less easily shaken. Finally, consider the long-term impact of mastering this skill. Life is full of disrespect, from minor slights to significant injustices. By learning to turn these moments into growth, you build an unshakable foundation of confidence and self-respect. This doesn't mean becoming indifferent to others' behavior, but rather refusing to let it define your self-worth or derail your peace of mind. You learn to stand tall, not because the world is kind, but because you are strong.